Hello Floss Tube. Welcome back to Grandma's World. I'm Debbie and I was not planning to be here today. Um, but I thought that it was appropriate to come on today and give anybody who stopped by the opportunity to laugh at me and make fun of me. Uh, in the last post, I made these big declarations about not understanding the excitement about Ray Dunn and um, swearing that I was not going to collect Ray Dunn, even though I had a thing or two, um, a piece or two that were Ray Dunn. That was not going to be my thing. I wasn't going to do that. And um, I'm here with confessions. <laughs> that story took a different turn. Um, and I also um, was like, I wasn't planning to be here today because I thought I, would, I had a lot of disagreeable things to do. I had some phone calls to make and I hate making phone calls. I don't like talking on the phone. I don't like doing business on the phone. I don't have any of my financial information on my phone and because I'm terrified I'm going to lose my phone and then that stuff would be available to other people and I just don't, I don't like telephones. I didn't like them when they were landlines. And I don't like them. I think part of it is that when I'm talking to someone, I want to see their face. <laughs> I want to see their expression. I want to know if I'm communicating clearly, you know, or am I saying something and they're going, huh? So um, I just, I don't like being on the phone, but I had some calls I had to make today, or I had to make, and I decided, okay, I'm going to make these today. Um, and then I was going to run errands. I was going to take my taxes up to the tax guy and, and it, you know, just not a lot of fun stuff going on. But what happened, um, I got my phone calls out of the way. One went really well and one of them was okay. I think I got the information I needed and I got all my tax stuff together and it's ready to go except that, um, it, it, there's no problem with it. The issue is that I also got a notification on my phone from Costco that I needed to have a prescription refilled. And Costco is right across the freeway from my accountant. So I, I so it, and they're saying it's not, the prescription might not be ready until 2.30 tomorrow. So I said, okay, I'm not going, I'm not driving. This is a whole different town away. I'm not driving the tax stuff up today and then going up and picking up my prescription tomorrow. So I said, you know what? <laughs> I had to make those phone calls and it wasn't fun and I'm going to do something fun. So I thought I'd do true confessions about my shopping um, after having made this grand pronouncement, um, probably a little bit pompous and a little um, ostentatious about um, how, and, and it really is true, I really do want my Floss Tube channel to be a place to be accountable for actually accomplishing some stitching um, and not so much about haul. Uh, and the way this is turning out, I am buried in pretty things right now <laughs> to share. So, uh, so be it. Such is life. I, I put it out there in the universe and it manifested and we're just going to go from there. I did, I have accomplished some stitchy things and I'm kind of happy with that. So, first of all, on Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, let me move this stuff out of the way here. It just can go up here for later. Is that intriguing? Not really. So Shores of Hawk Run Hollow is a carriage house samplings piece. This is the cover of it. And when I saw that, first of all, I was really attracted to it anyway because she captures the whole East Coast, to me that whole East Coast Cape Cod Nantucket vibe, which I love. I love visiting my friend in Massachusetts and she usually takes me out to the coast and Cape, they took me to Cape Cod last year. Uh, both years that I've gone to visit her, she's taken me to Ogunquit, which is next to Big Sur. It's my favorite little spot on earth. Um, so anyway, when I saw this, I, it really captured that vibe and I said, I want to do that. And I want to put it in my new guest room um, eventually when it's done. But as I started looking at it, one of the things that we had done in Cape Cod was go to the Real Pirate Museum. And the Real Pirate Museum is about a pirate ship called the Widda. And the Widda is the only documented sunken pirate ship that's being recovered 
and they're getting lots of treasure out of the Witta. They're just off the coast of Cape Cod. It has a wonderful story, at least to me it's a wonderful story, and I have mentioned it before. In short, Sam Bellamy, English fisherman, comes to Cape Cod on a fishing expedition, meets a yellow-haired girl, falls in love with her, asks for her hand in marriage. Dad said, no way, not to a poor fisherman. So Sam gets on another ship, a trade ship, that will pay him more, uh, and he's going to go on this trading expedition and come back and see if Papa will give his permission at that point. And while he's out, he's gone for a year, um, he takes over the ship, which turns out to be not just a simple trade ship, but an actual slave trip, slave ship, takes it over and converts it into a pirate ship and proceeds to pirate the Spanish tr treasure ships that are sailing between South America and Spain. Uh, and he does so. He's actually given a letter of mark to do that during that year, which is later rescinded. I don't know the details of how that information, if it ever even got to him. Um, because typically on these ships, they're out in the ocean and they don't get a lot of communication. But at any rate, um, he, he fills the ship, the hold of the ship with treasure from raiding Spanish ships, adds more ships to his fleet, and they are headed into to port, port in Cape Cod. They're going to go... He's going to go get his lady love and impress her father with all the gold bullion and, and stuff that he's gotten. They're, they're finding a lot of treasure things um, off the Witta there. And um, they get caught in a hurricane right at 500 feet off the coast of Cape Cod. Hurricane hits and the Witta gets flipped upside down and Sam is killed. And the treasure, the ship sinks and the treasure sinks with it. And now that was in 1717. And for the last several years, um, a fresh treasure hunter found it. And there, he and his crew are still bringing everything up. And um, he took some of the money and made the Real Pirate Museum. It is the most fabulous museum. One of the most fabulous. I'm a historian. I've been to a lot of museums. This is probably my favorite museum ever ever it is so well done any rate i love that story and um decided that i wanted to, to use the shores of hawk run hollow to tell the story of sam bellamy and the widow and i really was only looking at this block here which is the in memory of it says in memory of lieutenant jacob pomeroy anchored in the haven of rest in may of 1745 i can just change the words around and make that to sam bellamy i also as i looked at this chart realized there were some boxes that didn't excite me that kind of i didn't understand them and i didn't really want to do them so one of them was this one down here and the other was this one right here and the more i looked at this chart the more i realized it would better tell the story if I rearrange some of the boxes, first of all. That shouldn't be a problem because they're pretty much, except for the center box, they're pretty much all the same size. But I needed something to replace the ones I didn't do. I didn't want to do, it's not, I would have liked to have done the ship in the bottle here. Where did that one go? Here. I didn't want to do this stuff up here. I don't really understand it. Nor do I, did I want to do this stuff over here. Easily enough, I thought this box could move down here. It probably seems appropriate to do the in memory of down in this final box. But the rest of the stuff is a little out of order for the story of the Witta. So I went shopping, and this, this is an enabling thing. I saw someone on one of this, the Facebook pages that I follow um, talking about their work on this one. So this is also carriage house samplings, and this is the Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow pattern. And as I was looking, she was holding it up like this, and I was looking at it and saw this one over here. So maybe if I turn it this, it'll be easier. This one here looks to me like a pirate ship has sunk. And I said, well, uh, that to me, that's worth buying the book. So I bought the pattern so that I could put in this block in the place of one of those other blocks. And then that got me really looking at some of the other blocks. So the story of Sam Witta, of Sam Bellamy and the Witta, is that he li he's gone for a year and um, 
he goes down in the spring of 1717. So assuming that the spring is when he leaves, I, I said, you know, there's room here to shuffle these boxes around, maybe add one more and get that whole year going on here to show that a year has passed. So I went looking again and ended up buying a third hawk run hollow pattern so that I could get another um, a, a Christmas. This is Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. And I said, I, I want a winter week. I want a winter, one that really says winter. To me, this one says spring, summer, that's fine. So I kind of left that where it was. And then I moved this one up here to be fall. And then I moved um, this one down in into here to be her waiting for him to come back and then um after that i have um i actually well i'll show you what i did i scanned them and rearranged them so that it will actually so that i can actually kind of keep track so this one wait this one comes out of christmas at hawk run hollow this one comes out of halloween at hawk run hollow and the rest of them are all from Shores. I just rearranged them. So now I've got the yellow. This will be the yellow-haired girl here. I'll change her hair to yellow. I also have a, a, an issue with the way she's looking. If she's up on the widow's walk, she'll be looking out to see, not at me. So I'm going to turn her around and give her yellow hair. Um, and other than that, it fits really well. Once I've made those, those substitutions from those other um, books... So it ended up being kind of an expensive chart, but if you're gonna do that much work, uh, I figure I want it to be the way I want it to be. And I really wouldn't mind. I could see myself somewhere in the future maybe making some ornaments from this, from the Christmas one, and then maybe just doing Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Um, I really like all of this chart and I'm a total Halloween nut, so I can see that happen. So where I got with it, I'm on block four now, and what I did this week oops, is um, got, I got about halfway through. I got the letters done. I don't like doing letters. I got the letters done in block four, and then um, now I have to work in the moon here. Um, these little pieces are stars. I used the uh, loop method that was demonstrated on YouTube. It's not working for me for this because the it's not holding the starter thread. Um, so I'll probably switch over to a pin stitch. And I don't know, this is the, this is the co color I have in my conversion for this. And so they're little red stars. But I think my fabric is dark enough that I might go ahead and try some white stars to see how that looks. So I did some work on Hawk Run Hollow this week. Not a lot, but I did some. Oh, do not fall down. I can't get another one of you. And then I also um, got these guys. This is my Garen Toten bag for last month, for February this month. It is so gorgeous. Look at the inside of this bag. And they... they I'm, my year, I start a new year next month, and I was going to give up my spot, and I decided not to. I just really love getting these once a month. So um, as soon as it came in, I knew exactly what I wanted to put in it, and I went to move it in and decided I wanted to work on it. This is um, Nancy Turner's Victorian Motto Sampler Shop Harmony. I am not usually attracted to any of these Quaker style, what they call Quaker with the motifs. Um, the, what attracted me to this one, number one, it's small. Uh, and number two, it's the birds, because I'm a bird nut. And all of these little motifs, or most of them around the edges, have some um, communication about birds. They're kind of about birds, plus the middle one, of course, is. Um, I'm doing, I don't remember the fabric. I was, I've been collecting a lot of fabrics and I don't think I still have the information for this one, but I definitely wanted the green. Eventually I'm going to make a pillow out of it for my bed. So I wanted the green. The room has green walls and then the bed quilt that I'm working on has a lot of this bright pink in it. 
and um, I'm using Threadworks because it's pretty easy for me to get and pretty consistent as far as color. I bought two hanks of it um, and we'll see if that turns out to be enough. So what I did this week, um, just because I wanted to, was work on the um, flower. I had most of the bird finished. I finished it up, this one bird, and I finished it up and added these flowers down here. Um, so that'll take a while. This is my birthday piece. I started it on my birthday and I'm still, you know, I'm still trying to figure out a rotation that excites me. Um, and I'm not there yet. I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, last week, Thursday, so this is Tuesday, February 16th. And Thursday is my usual day to spend the day with my mom or spend a few hours, about five hours with my mom. But my brother was able to get her a COVID vaccination appointment. And I ended up driving from my house, the 20, 40 mile round trip to her house, supervising her, making sure that she got a shower and felt comfortable with where she was with that. And then we came back to my house and then went another 15 miles up to the next town to so she could get her vaccination. And then when we were done to celebrate that, she really likes a restaurant in my town called Lure, and I do too. And she had really been looking forward to going to Lure. They've got open dining now, outdoor dining. Uh, and they had a table in what they call their enclosed patio, um, which it, it feels like you're inside, but all of the walls behind you are just open windows. So there's a lot of ventilation. Plus they have heaters if, if you needed them, but it was a nice, nice day. Um, and then from there, I drove her back from my house, the 40 mile round trip to deliver her at her house. I was tired on Friday, it turned out. And there was a lot of moving her wheelchair in and out of the car. Um, and somewhere in there, I had to go fill her car with gas because some, someone had been using it and hadn't filled it up. So um, yeah, it turned out to be a long day and I was really tired Friday. And I said, you know what? I've been retired for going on four years and I don't feel like I've ever had a retired day. A day to just kind of stop and do whatever I want when I want to do it. So I um, decided just to tuck in, just go with whatever I felt like doing and tucked in in my recliner. I put, um, I've been binge watching uh, Netflix, The Flash on Netflix. And so I put that on and um, let it just go all day. And I stitched and I stitched, stitched and stitched, stitched and stitched all day. This is the piece I'm working on. It is, let me get it out of here. I'd been taking it to my mom's thinking that I could cross stitch when I'm with her. I'm with her three days a week. And it doesn't really work out because she likes, she wants someone to talk to her and she likes to having conversations. And I'm, even though my sister and my brother both fill their roles for her, um, they don't sit and talk at her. And so I uh, tell her what's going on in their lives that much. And so cross stitch requires too much concentration to be having a, con to be contributing, creating a conversation while you're doing it. At least it does for me. So I gave up working on this at her house. It is a Donna Bayless piece for um, her company is called, <laughs> I have to look it up. Um, well, this says Stitch by the Bay, but it's, it has a different, I guess it's, it, I know it as by the Bay Needle Art. And she's from York, Maine. And so a lot of her pieces also pull up that East Coast feel for me. And I fell in love with this because of that. And it kind of looks East Coasty. And it was fun because you have Santa in his ship being pulled by the seahorses. And I um, had a couple of things. I don't really like letters. And so I didn't want to do the Merry Christmas up at the top. I loved this piece down at the bottom. It has a couple of sea snails, but, but it has the, the red in there are little fish, those little fishes. And I didn't want the yellow fishes, so I did them all in red. 
And then I decided just to repeat this up at the top. I don't know that I would do that again with one of Donna's pieces. There, until you change it, you don't realize how perfect it was before. I might leave the Merry Christmas off if I did it again and just not have anything up there, but I went ahead and did what I had thought I would do. I'm not, not thrilled with it, but I, but I do like it. I'm not gonna change it out. But here's the completed. It's not quite done. I have the little seahorses have, I don't, didn't bring a board in here. Um, where the le where the grain attaches to their necks, there's a little charm on each of the seahorses. And then there is a star on the back of his boat. And then, then it'll be done. I, when I added the garland at the top, I was like, I looked for a charm and I had one in stash that I think is really appropriate for that. Um, and I have the little charms, for the seahorses. I just, they're packed away somewhere and with the house still crazy. Um, I, I'm not, I can't put my hands on them right yet, but that's okay. I'm not ready to f finish this. I've, I've decided I want it to be, it's going in the guest room for the holidays. And Donna also did a piece that I want to start on now uh, called The Nubble. And it's the um, lighthouse in York, Maine that I have been, I have been to. I've been on a tour boat from Ogunquit up the coast and take a look at the Nubble and then come back down. It was a wonderful trip and I loved it. And I love the Nubble. I love the story of the Nubble. And um, so that'll be the next one I start. And what I want is to finish this using the magnet techniques so that during the Christmas season, I can put this up on the wall and then change it out to the Nubble one for the rest of the year. So that's kind of where that stands for me. And then, is that it? That, that, and that. Yeah, I guess that's all I wanted to share as far as finishing stuff. But then I have another piece to start. And again, those boys, the gear on toting bags, get me every time. They posted this. Brenda Gervais, um, what's it, what is it called? Easter Peep Parade and it just immediately I said oh I need to do this one it looks like so much fun to do but I didn't want it on that brown so I went to um, this has become my favorite place to get fabric vintage needle arts and ordered three pieces of pink and I forgot to bring the other two over here but I want to do that on pink. Now it's dyed, the way she dyes, this is probably actually the front of the fabric. It's a little bit darker, but it's also a little bit peachier and I want this to be more this pale, closer to a truer pink. So I'm gonna do it on this side. I did kit it. Um, from, mostly from stash. And that means I made a few substitutions. Um, th these designers, I, I guess I can only project because I'm not a designer, would not pretend to be. <laughs> that is just a whole talent I don't have and I'm glad there are people that do. But in this case, so these are the colors I kitted for it. But what the design shows, the tail on the bunny and the ribbon around the bunny's neck is supposed to be this color, this frosted sage. And I don't know, my bunny is not having a green tail. That's not gonna happen. And it's also, I think that was what I said. No, that's a lie. 
The scarf and the tail were supposed to be tufted yellow. And I, my thought was, no, my bunny is not going to have a yellow tail. So I have the color. The chicks on this are kind of a mustardy yellow. And I think they need to be the tufted yellow. I want little pale yellow fluffy chicks. So I'm going to use that for that. It was the egg that was supposed to be the frosted sage, but I really like the blue egg rather than the green. So I had in my kit um, Classic Colorworks Hydrangea, and I might do it in that. That's a blue and purple variegation. Or I might do this, um, I think it's called Blue Jay. Yeah, Blue Jay is a pretty blue for that. So I had, I had the pattern, already had the pattern, had already tucked it away for future, for the future. Someday, someday I will do this. Then I went, and this is where I segue into my Ray Dunn experience. I went to Home Goods. I had two things I wanted at Home Goods. They didn't have either one of them. They didn't have them, but I was wandering around looking for them to see if, if they had them. And I kept seeing other things. And I got this. I thought this was so cute. Bunny kisses and Easter wishes. Of course, this is the kind of the new fad where it's stacked to look like books. And I looked at, first of all, it's big enough to mount that, this on. In fact, I measured it out and it's going to put about, a, leave about an inch all the way around on the top. And so I can do a flat finish on this and um, put some kind of cute, I'm not real hot on the pink gingham, but cute Easter fabric around it. And then I looked at it more closely, and sure enough, this is a licensed Ray Dunn style. See? In fact, there's her dog, Wilma. And that's another part of the story. So I bought that that day to do that, and that made me really excited about getting to work on it. And then as I was walking around Home Goods, I am looking for pots to put on my front porch. I want four, I have a wrought iron thing that has room for four or five potted plants and I want them all to match. So I'm looking around home goods and I didn't find the pots I wanted but I found this one. And I grabbed this and it cracks me up. It's a black pot that says plant. This is also Ray Dunn. And this is how I'm becoming a Ray Dunn fan. Not the cups, the mugs that everybody seems to be so crazy about. Not the canisters, not the bowls, but just anything she do has done that is silly like this. A plant that says, a pot that says plant. The other Ray Dunn thing that I had purchased, same story. It wasn't, I wasn't out looking for Ray Dunn stuff. I just was at Home Goods, and I'm a bird nut, and there was this bird house that said chirp. This is also Ray Dunn licensed. And it had the cute, this cute little bird on the back. So now I'm up to three pieces. For someone who's not going to collect Ray Dunn, I got a pretty good start on it. I got interested in her. This is a historian in me. It's kind of a curse. Um, I am a historian. And I went looking online to see what I could learn about her. And she's just a really interesting person. I enjoyed the hunt for information. I enjoyed learning what I did and found out that she had done a book. And this is her book. It's called In Pursuit of Inspiration, Trust Your Instincts, Instincts and Make More Art. And I ordered it um, and then started going through it. This is what I call an altar book. There are just are some books that are so fun and so beautiful, you leave them out like a coffee table book and go to them for comfort or inspiration or, you know, it's, they're more of a spiritual thing than just entertainment. And so I went looking through this book and was completely 
taken with this person. Look, plants and feathers. That's my kind of girl. Well, that's not a feather. I thought she had feathers in here. And this is kind of her thing from what I've learned. It's just common, ordinary things. Um, be sure to put your feet in the right place and stand firm. So anyway, I was really happy with this purchase. And so now I'm on my way. I like the artist. I like her story. And now it's time to go back and look and see what else is out there. I, I know I'm not, and I'm going to say this again, but that see, this seems to manifest it and I end up getting in trouble. Um, not interested in the cups and mugs, although if I ran across one of the ones with the chicky on the top, that might end up in my Easter collection. But that wasn't what I was looking for. I just was going to these places that carry her stuff, like Home Goods again. And then yesterday was TJ Maxx, a place I probably will never set foot in again. But I did wander around since I got into one and, and shopped. So I found there, um, and I, again, I'm a, th these are things that I got not at TJ Maxx, I got these at Home Goods. So again, here is a birdhouse, a Ray Dunn birdhouse, licensed birdhouse that says tweet and it goes with my birdhouse not the same shape but my other one says chirp and I think I'm on my way to a nice display um, I have to figure out a safe place outside to put these um, but I will and then also at home goods I had this one that says imagine did not appeal to me in terms of message the way the others do. The others have that silly kind of fun sense of humor. Um, but this is a color that I think will go in my guest room. And one of the things I'm putting in my guest room is a writing desk. And so I could see this being on the desk. My writing desk, it has a, a writing surface and then it has two drawers and an extra surface that can almost be like an altar surface. So I haven't decided about this, where it's gonna go yet, but you know, home goods, if you know home goods, you know their stuff is not terribly expensive and you kind of feel like you can take a chance. So that's what I'm gonna do there. It might actually end up on the back deck, which has turquoises in it. And then at um, TJ Maxx, I found this one. It's an acorn. It is again a Ray Dunn license and it says fly. So that gives me the three. It gives me the kind of teardrop shaped one that says chirp, the black house shaped one that says tweet, and now the acorn that says fly. And I think that is a really nice, kind of a nice collection. And then as I'm wandering around, well, this was wandering around Home, De um, home Goods. I keep saying Home Depot, Home Goods. There were a bunch of these little, their desk signs, and they said different things on them. Be creative. Um, I don't even remember all of them because the one that talked to me was this one. Keep going. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this out where I can see it many times a day just to say, just hang in there, just keep going. <laughs> and get, we'll get through this. And then struck me, I, I tend to, I'll collect these rubber spatulas that say things anyway. And this again, this is Ray Dunn. There's her license. And it says bunny treats. And it has a little cookie cutter on it of a carrot. And I can see, I can be hopeful in the future of being able to have my grandkids come over and make cookies at Easter time. And we will use the carrot cookie cutter to maybe leave treats for the Easter bunny. And the last thing I grabbed, just because I passed it, I'm not a big candle nut, but look at the design on this. Isn't this lovely? And it is Ray Dunn. It's this dream. It's a gardenia scented white candle. Very simple. It's got a decent fragrance. I'm allergic to perfumes, so I don't get into a lot of perfumed things as a rule. So there I went in one from one floss tube post to the next, I went from no Ray Dunn, I'm not gonna collect this stuff, to now I'm a huge Ray Dunn, the person fan, 
and I actually have a collection. I am not going to claim I'm never going to buy anything else because I really do like these birdhouses and um, who knows? I give up. I, I, I surrender. I'm a fan. I can. And I'm buying haul. I'm not just sticking with the... Uh, I also said oh, I'm not going to show so much haul. So in addition to going... The reason that I ended up at the TJ Maxx was because it was right next door to Michael's. And I had gone there to pick up some frames for the guest room. A whole other story I won't bore you with. Um, and got the frames. They were on sale for 60% off. Yay. But I was looking around for other things that might do for finishing. And I love these laser cut pieces. I have two others of these um, packed away with my Easter things. But I can see finding one of the inspiring Easter pieces, you know, and, you know, cutting them in such a way that this gets shown off. So that was fun. But the one that really has me excited right now are the ones that do. I found these two. These were part of the spring collection and they were on sale 40% off. And I'm thinking, I, I love the color and I love the little hearts and the simple house shape. And I think this would, should be pretty easy to find a small, these are really little, I'll put it up next to my face. Um, I think I measured out, this is like two and a half by four inches, something like that. So I should be able to find a small, designed to go there. And the same with this one. I should be able to find, again, this is small, this isn't a very big, this is cut out, this hair here, and I should be able to find something that will cover that up. So as I'm thinking about that, and in knowing what my stash is, um, I think that the stitching with the housewives pieces are probably a little too big for that. Although I realize, and I have a lot of them, um, but I realize I, you could go to a smaller count. You know, maybe I like, I like to do 16s, but I could go to an 18 or even a 20 if I could find it um, and make them smaller. And then it dawned on me, I have a collection of Veronique Angelie, um books. And her stuff, so this is the Christmas one if I can keep this is all right so these are all they're just exquisite but she has all these little designs that you gather up and put into bigger things if you want to but I think that like on an 18 this little guy would probably fit in one of those bought little house boxes or these little mice with the mushroom or this is my favorite the bird is bringing something there the, there are little baby birds here that have presents and then I assume this is the mother bringing them a piece of holly so I can see myself with these using that magnet technique to be able to change out by season these tiny little um, pieces didn't I have another I had others to show you this is their garden book, and it had several in it that I've been wanting to do. I just didn't know what I was going to do with them. Like a nest would be very cute on one of those. And then some of these I can't share because in a lot of her books, the um, she doesn't really have a... Just a picture of the finished piece. All she has are the charts. Let's see if I can find, because I thought this one, oh. So this one she put in, I don't know if I can do this. Where did it go? Oh, yeah, she put it in a cage. So I don't know if it's gonna show up. But it's, there's a little bird here sitting on a branch. She's facing away from us. And I think that would be adorable on one of those little house boxes. And that's when I've been, I've always wanted to do that little bird, but I never knew what, where to put it. And 
I definitely have, a, I've always wanted to do this little group of birds on something. I think it's too big to fit all three of them, but I would settle for the little middle bird and part of the branch on one of those little house boxes. And then she has a book of fables and fairy tales. Oh my gosh, it's full of things that could work for this. Um, let's see. Like this one is the tortoise and the hare. And just, so they, she's showing their race and the hare being kind of lazy. But look at the, like this little bird here on the branch or the hare asleep here would be really cute on those boxes, maybe side by side. And then there's this little bird on the fence here is so cute. What else did we have in here? Oh, there's my paper. And then this one, this is the Jack and the Beanstalk. And of course, the way I heard the story was that it was the goose with the golden eggs, but in the, her version in France, it's the hen. And so there's a hen up here sitting on three golden eggs. Just a little tiny thing, but it would fit somewhere in there. Um, so I went through all the books. I got excited about what could go in some of these pieces. Excuse me. And it reminded me there's one more of her books that I've been lusting after for a few years. It's really expensive. At least I think it's expensive. Um, and I decided to go for it, to go just go ahead and get it I, because I've wanted it. It's, a, it's little, it's butterflies and bugs and small animals. And I've seen those pieces um, stitched on things before. And I, I just know they're coming out of that book. So I went ahead and ordered it. And it should be here, they said, February 21st. So anyway, I'll have lots of choices to do those pieces from Michael's. Um, this was something that I saw at Michael's and I'm always impressed with what Priscilla and Chelsea do with these metal postal tins. Um, and I think this one is gorgeous. Look at those flowers. The thing is, I really like the post courier in the middle. I don't see myself covering it up, so I don't know how I'm going to use this, if at all. I might, it might just be what it is. I have a whole Valentine's Day project going for my entry, and I really think this will be fine just the way it is on that. I don't think I have to mount anything on it, although it has kind of a blank space up here. Um, and so I might be able to stitch something for there. But I'm not too worried about it. Um, and then the last thing, the Ray Dunn thing, I had it buried over here so I couldn't see it, that I got, that I got so excited about. I, so I decorated a couple of rooms in my house. And I, in the front room, I was hoping to get a little writing desk somewhere where I could use my um, laptop and or just write by hand because I do a lot of longhand writing and um, the, it's not going to work out. There isn't going to be enough wall space to put a little desk in there. So I said, well, you're going to have to get one of those lap desks then so you can go in there and put your feet up and turn the fire on and have a lap desk. So I'm wandering around um, uh, Home Goods and they had this lap desk for $14.99 and I said, oh, that's the perfect size. And I picked it up and looked at it. And it's Ray Dunn again. So I can't get away from her. And here she is. This is Ray Dunn and her dog Wilma. And if you do some research about her online, she's been interviewed several times. And then she tells you in your book about Wilma. Um, I'm excited. I was just was really excited. It not only it's a wooden desk, first of all. Uh, it's cut beautifully. It's a little bit wide for my chair, but 
I can I can make it work. Um, certainly for handwriting, if I'm writing or doing anything by hand, it's perfect um, to sit my um, laptop on. It's not not quite perfect, but it's gorgeous, and I love it. All right, so is that all the goodies from that, those trips? Because something else happened today. Once I decided I was going to bring all this out, oh, and I had these little boxes. I got these at Michael's on a previous trip. And they're little balls of boxes. They were 99 cents each. Here's how big they are. I think some of Priscilla and Chelsea's fat patterns are going to fit right in these. Um, they're nicely finished. And so there's one for a Christmas me and it has a snowflake on it and then there's a heart so I think one of their valentine ones would go in there and then there's just an oval I think I got two of these so those are going to go in the stash for finishing I think they'll they'll work out fine it would be fun um to have a cross stitch piece in the back and then just some little you know pick decorations on the inside of it I can do that Anyway, uh, once I had decided what else, oh, I know what else I got. So I have this, this is one of the first pieces of embroidery I did. And I, it goes in my entry most of the time. I did it from 1974 to 1978, it's cruel. And the whole time I've had it, it, it I framed it, it was during the times when you could buy the stretcher bars and the frame pieces individually at Michael's you could get your they came by lengths and you could do it yourself and so I did and the whole time I've had this frame I have hated this gold bright gold on here and so um, they don't sell the framing stuff like this anymore at least not as far as I know of and I decided as I was walking around Michael's I've been oiled bronze paint and instead I found this wandering around it's deco art suede and they had a sample of it there and it makes a really good it actually has a texture on it that when it dries it looks like suede and I'm going to paint over that gold strip with this um, green to look like suede all right was that it that's it so that's what I was going to share today ta-da and then I went out to my mailbox and lo and behold I have my Tokyo Kawaii Club shipment for, for February. So I'm going to sit here and open it. Because um, Michael, this is Michael Donahoe. He's a personal shopper in Tokyo. And he does um, the Kawaii Club. He, it's a, one of those things, it's like any other mystery box or month, fabric of the month or whatever. He just goes shopping for you. And he doesn't ever let me down, although it's a challenge because he doesn't have a lot of, oh my goodness. Um, he lets you express three preferences and mine are, I collect Dumbo things, I collect Chippendale things, and I collect Mickey Mouse, but not with Minnie Mouse. And he says, well, that one's hard because he's, they're always together in Japan. They almost always show Mickey Mouse with her. But Chip and Dale are really popular, so he can usually find some of that. And Dumbo, especially when the movie came out, anything cute, kawaii means cute. So anything cute is popular in Japan. And so he can usually find me some Dumbo stuff. So we'll see. I can see there's something kind of neat already. And he usually gives you a shipping box or a shipping package and then puts it in a shop bag. But here's what I'm seeing. What is this? Oh, it's a pillow. How cute. So there's Mickey on one side and Minnie on the other. And I can now see a basket of pillows and things for um, some holiday. Look, it's even got the Mickey Mouse hat on it. Um, and this can be in that basket. That's cool. And this looks like some origami papers. Design paper. Oh my goodness, it is. Origami papers with Mickey Mouse 
designs. So I don't do, I mean, I, do, I have done origami. It's not something I do much of, but I could see like maybe lining the back of one of these boxes with one of these papers and then putting a, a piece of cross stitch on it. That could work. I'm gonna run out of juice again. And these are cute, just some puppy socks. These are half socks. Awesome. I may tuck these. I don't wear these half socks. My feet are too big. Um, and um, I might just tuck these away for a ducking stuffer or something for someone else. Although everybody in my family has big feet. Uh-oh. Look, it's a Dale Zoom Zoom. We can't get Zoom 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 in the United States anymore. And so Michael always puts one in for me, for my collection. Look at the sparkly kimono that he's wearing. Very cute, love it. I haven't packed up my Disney tree yet, so I think I'll, I can do that. Oh my, how do I decide? It's a little card from Shop Disney. I hope I know. I hope this is what it says. It looks like it's part of the sushi collection. Oh, it's exactly what it looks like. It's a little sushi. It's ceramic. A sushi Pluto. That is so cute. He sent me a, a vinyl sushi. What The sushi with the um, Mickey Mouse. I really like that one. So that's fun. And there's one more thing in here that's definitely a chipmunk, but I can't see it until I get it out. Oh, it's Dale. Oh, it's a, a lip smacker. I actually have one of these, but it's not specifically Dale. That's great. Well, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Nice job. And you always leaves you a thoughtful little note, stay safe or rad, stay thin rad. Um, and then he took the time, it's a Chippendale paper, and he took the time to use the Chippendale stamp. At a time when I'm not got, getting a lot of personal caregiving going to me, I live alone and it's, it's just crazy time. People are in survival mode and, and so am I. Um, I'm very lucky that I have sons that, uh, my son in Japan pops up, says, hey kid, let's FaceTime mom, and he keeps me in contact there, and then my son in the neighboring town posts videos of the babies all the time, so I'm grateful for that. Um, at any rate, uh, it's nice to have someone, and it's kind of sad, isn't it, that I get so excited over someone just putting a little Chippendale stamp on a piece of note paper for me, but that's where I am. Um, so that was fun, fun to share and thanks for coming by and I don't know when I'll be back again. Uh, it's going to be, March is going to be really crazy because, um, my sister at, is helping her son move. So we live in Southern California. He's going up to Wyoming. That'll be an adventure. Southern California boy going up. <laughs> to the Great Plains in the middle of winter um, to start school up there. And they're gonna be gone for two weeks. She's gonna be gone helping him move. And she's the one who takes care of my mom at night. She lives with my mom. They both live with my mom and take care of her uh, in the afternoons and evenings. So we're kind of trying to, my brother and I are trying to make sure that that two weeks is covered so that my mom will have some safety, some support, her second um, COVID vaccination is two days before they leave. So I'm just gonna go through the same thing we went through last Thursday, except instead of taking her home, I'll bring her to my house and keep her here for a few days so we can keep an eye out for um, side effects. The second, apparently the second dose is worse than the first dose as far as side effects go. And she is 80, she'll be almost 89 when that rolls around, her, her birthday's in March. Um, so we want to um, 
I just want to make sure that for those first few evenings after she's had that second shot that um, she's supported. She, I don't want her home in her house alone in case she does have some side effects. So uh, I'll try to make her comfortable here with me and then, and then he and I are going to just trade off, you know, making sure that she's supported for that time that she's there by herself. Uh, and during that time, I'm finishing up one of the next phase of this house thing and that means getting a lot of the stuff out of the way in that room over there I've already made my appointment with the movers to come back on March 9th and they're going to move my entertainment center into the front room and at that point I can start emptying out my um, storage unit the stuff is just going to go in that room until I can sort it all out but I'm paying $200 a month I was I thought I'd be in there two months and then COVID hit and now I've been in there a year so um, nothing in there is worth continuing to pay that to hold it for me. So I'm going to do, do that. But I gave them notice and I have to be out by the, the end of next month. So it's all going to happen in March. And I'm thinking I might be absent from here for a while. <laughs> um, hope the New Year's going well for any, everybody. I hope that those of you that have Valentine's got treated sweetly. Um, and see you next time. Bye.